The screencast pertains to the materials in Module 6, Lesson 2. It's based upon the problem set, uh, but that parallels the homework very closely. All right. It says use a set square to draw a line perpendicular to the x-axis through points P, Q, and R. Label a new line the y-axis. Okay, well, I haven't figured out how to uh, make something that looks like a set square uh, using the screencasting software. But in my classroom, we actually have these things that look like triangles. We, we call them set squares. They're like this drafting tool triangle. It may, may be like this. And what we do is we line up this portion of this uh, set square or triangle so that it's directly against this X line here. Then the next thing we need to do is slide it over. We'll slide it until the edge meets point P but maintains this uh, its contact with the line X. Then what we do is we'll use that as a straight edge and doing the best I can with my free hand here, we're going to draw a line and that is now perpendicular. When we say perpendicular, we mean that it's 90 degrees and we're going to label that one Y. Okay, the same sort of procedure here. I'll use uh, red to represent the set square. We sl uh, make it so that the bottom edge uh, touches that line X and again we use that as a guide to draw a perpendicular line. Uh, again, doing the best I can with freehand, uh, it really doesn't lend itself to the use of rulers. And the same thing here, I'm just going to kind of, uh, this one's a little different though, that we're just going to slide that set square until it comes to point R on line X, and I'll just label this X, and I should label that one Y. So the set square, we're just going to slide it over this way until the edge contacts here, and we'll just draw in the best we can freehand, and we'll call that Y. Now it says choose one of the sets of perpendicular lines above and create a coordinate plane. Mark seven units on each axis and label them as whole numbers. So I'll choose uh, the middle one, and I'll just uh, make these uh, tick marks, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and I'll label them one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. I'll do the same on the y-axis, try to get about the same distance, I'm just freehanding this as best I can, and I'll have one, two, three, four, five, six, one more, make seven. A little sloppy using this, but uh, you get the sense. We also can label this point right here as the origin, where we have uh, x is zero and y is zero, so uh, the coordinates, as we'll find out soon, are zero, zero. That is the origin. It's an important word throughout this uh, module. Okay, this next part here tells us to use the coordinate plane to answer the following. Looking at A, we need to uh, tell what shape is at each location. Now, you've probably done some of this before, but we'll review it for you. We have an x-coordinate of 2 and a y-coordinate of 5. So what I'm going to do here is look at my x-axis, and I'm going to go out to 2. All right. I can also look at my y-axis, and I can go up to 5. I can see that the two lines intersect right here. Another way to look at this is we can go 2 along the x-axis and we can go up 5 parallel to the y-axis. And we can see that the shape here is a triangle. So let's try to get that in there. Triangle. A little tight on space, but we made it. The next one is 1 for the x and 2 for the y. So I go... Uh, along here, 1, I go up 2, or go uh, along my y-axis and see the intersect here, and I have my circle. Next is 5 for the x and 6 for the y. So I go along here, 5, and I can go up 6. 1, 2, 3, 4, 
five, six, we have the square. Notice that we have a two uh, interval of two on our graph here. That means that for every two we have one unit. And this line in between that would mean one half. But we'll deal with stuff like that a little bit later. And finally we go to six and five. So I go six along the x, up five parallel to the y axis, and I have my octagon. A little tough to write that. Octagon. Which shape is two units from the y-axis? Well, that's interesting. We're talking about two units from the y-axis, and that gives us a value for x. So if I start at y, I'm right here. That's my y-axis. And then I go one unit and two units. And you'll notice that when I talk about two units from the y-axis, I'm talking about an x value of 2. You'll see more problems in future lessons there. So we would say that that is the triangle. Just uh, giving you uh, other ways and alternative uh, ways to look at these. Which shape has the x-coordinate of 0? Okay, well, we're going to go and look at our x. And 0 is right there. So if it has an x-coordinate of 0, it lies on the y-axis. And what do we have here? We have a and there we have a parallelogram. And which shape is four units from the y-axis and three units from the x-axis? And again, we're going to see some interesting relationships. So four units from the uh, y-axis. There's our y-axis. Whoops, wrong tool. Let's get that again. Uh, our y-axis. We want to go four units from there. One, two, three, four. If we're talking about four units from the y-axis, we're actually talking about an x value of four. So we have, we're on this line right here. And three units from the x-axis. So we need to go, uh, here's our x-axis. We need to go one, two, three units. And we see that we have a diamond in that position. So again, this is introducing the idea uh, the distance from the y-axis is actually equals the value for x, and the distance from the x-axis equals the value for y. All right, so we have another one. Use the coordinate plane to answer the following. Uh, a little more practice with this. This time they give us the shape, and we're going to have to give the coordinates along the x and the y. The first one is our smiley face. And you'll notice that now we also have units that are a little bit different. Now we're talking about mixed numbers here, right? We have one-halves, and you'll notice there's two lines between the zero and the one-half. So this must be one-fourth, this must be three-fourths, one and one-fourth, one and three-fourths, etc. So back to the smiley face. If we start with our x, we need to go out and look at where we are here. And I'm going to uh, go, it's follow a vertical line down to the x-axis. I see that the value is 2. Now I'm going to go a horizontal, use a horizontal line going to the y. And I have a 1. So the coordinates are 2 for the x and 1 for the y. Next is the diamond. Okay, we're going to find that diamond. We're going to make a vertical line down to the x-axis. We can see that once again our x-coordinate is 2. Now we'll go from our shape to our y-coordinate. And we see that we have a line between 3 and a half and 4. As discussed, each one of these has a value of 1 fourth. So it's 1 fourth more than 3 and 1 half. That would be 3 and 3 fourths. The sum is directly on the y-axis, so it has an x value of 0. And again, we can go up that y-axis, and we see, uh, just like the uh, diamond, we are halfway between 3.5 and, and 4, and that is, again, 3 and 3 fourths. Finally, the heart. The heart is directly on the x-axis. It has a value that's between 
three and a half and four. So we have three and three fourths. And our value for y, if, if a point is plotted on the x-axis directly, the value for y is zero. Continuing, it says name a shape whose x-coordinates is half more than the value of the heart's x-coordinate. Well, here's our heart. And we need to go up by a half. This is uh, three and three fourths. So if we go one, two, up to there, that is two fourths more, or the value is four and one fourth. So what shape is more uh, is one half more than the hearts? Well, we can now find we found the spot on the x coordinate, x uh, axis rather, and we can uh, now follow that, and we see that we have a star in that location. So now we need to plot some points. It says plot a triangle at three for the three for the x and four for the y. So I'm going to go uh, up here. I'm going to find my x value of three, and then my y value for four. So I'm going to follow that up until I am right there. So we're going to plot that at three, going up, and four. I've got my point there, and it tells me to draw a triangle. So I will draw a triangle. Uh, plot a square at four and three-fourths and five. I have my four and three-fourths right here. And I need to go up to five, which is all the way up at the top. So four and three-fourths and five is a square. And finally, plot an x at one-half uh, for x and three fourths for y. One half for x, three fourths for y. We'll put an x right there. One half, three fourths. The next part uh, here is the pirate's treasure. Once again, it's uh, buried at x on the map. How could a coordinate plane make describing this location easier? Well, originally we talked about a distance uh, uh, from the tree at northeast, south, and west. Uh, we could do a number of things. We could make a coordinate plane. Uh, one of the idea here is we could kind of make the uh, palm tree the origin. And we can just uh, say one, two, four. One, two, three. We could say that the treasure is at two comma three, represented by our coordinate plane right here. It would make it quite a bit easier. And of course, we'd have to define the distance, right? This might be uh, two meters, uh, something like that. And uh, we could then locate that exact point by using the numbers and on our x and y axes.